Hey team, this is Tony in the IT department. Uh, we've uh, been handling a lot of the connectivity calls for a while now, and recently it's came to our attention that we've got an issue with the Netgear wireless router when we use the installation CD to set it up. When we run that software, it is detecting most internet connections as a static IP address, uh, which is going to cause a lot of frustration when you try to continue with the setup, uh, simply because it's going to detect the IP address as incorrect. So what we want to do is instead of running that CD, we just want to open the internet browser and make sure that we're connected to uh, make sure that we're connected to the network either by hardwire or uh, with wireless on the customer's network. So you can select the Netgear on the wireless or just have a hardwire plugged in. It may bring up a screen that says, "Do you want to set up an, uh, your network?" And the best thing to do there is click Connect to the network without setting it up. And that just goes ahead and connects you to the Wi-Fi without trying to use the wireless protected service. So once we connect, in the address bar, we want to log into the router with the 192.168.1.1. And it, it, it should come up to this important update, uh, Smart Wizard. And it will tell you to avoid conflict with your internet provider, uh, your router's IP will be updated to 10.0.0.1 and when we click continue it's going to do that immediately and uh, if you if you actually once it does that if you'll just type in the address 10.0.0.1 it will prompt you to log in and you will notice those changes here on the LAN port under router status On the LAN port, you will notice it's changed to 10.0.0.1, and on the IP address of the internet port is going to be your internet provider's IP address of 192.168.1. Some number. Uh, not all of these will show up with the same number, but uh, but some of them will. Some of them just have an external IP address of the one block, the one dot something. Uh, some of them may have an external IP address, but they still have that IP address block on their subnet, so it can cause a conflict. Therefore, it will detect that other connection. Once you do this and that IP address is changed, the entire system should be able to uh, just be plug and play. If the computer is running Windows XP or Windows Vista, you may just want to restart the computer and on any of the receivers, you may just simply want to do a reset connection, make sure it pulls a new IP address uh, from that setup, and you should be ready to go. Uh, you can click on the LAN setup on the left-hand side of that router underneath Advanced, and you'll see that it's a DHCP server, and it's going to start with the IP address of 10.0.0.2. So all of your devices are going to be 10.0.0. some number uh, for any receiver, uh, Hopper, or Joey, or any computer that's on that iPhone, whatever else the customer decides to use. Uh, now your Wi-Fi security, you can set that up or not, uh, unless the customer specifically asks for some type of security setup. I would just leave it open and just connect everything to it. Uh, if they do, uh, you can just go through the wireless security setup. You can click on the wireless settings, and I would select uh, actually the WPA PSK TKIP plus WPA2 PSK AES, and then just type in uh, a password, something simple for the customer to remember. Uh, you can let them pick it or use something as simple as 0123456 or one two three four five six seven eight. That way, you don't have to deal with any uppercase or lower lowercase letters because passwords are case sensitive uh, in every case. But once you do that, you click apply, give it a few seconds for the blue light, the blue wireless light, to come back on on the front of the Netgear, and then everything should be able to connect wirelessly. If you don't turn on security, it should just connect right off the bat. If you have any questions or anything, just call the connectivity hotline, and we'll be glad to help you.